Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for my overview of the Batman Under the Red Hood, the Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, what we're looking at here is the latest Batman Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. Boy, you get... Two for one today, because earlier today I did my Deadly Duo Deluxe Edition overview. And it's also a Batman book. But this is Under the Red Hood, the Deluxe Edition. Here we have a cover by Jock. And the title of the book right here, Judd Winnick, Doug Mankey, Tom Wynn, and Alex Sinclair. The DC logo. And Batman Under the Red Hood, the Deluxe Edition, Winnick, Mankey, Wynn, and Sinclair. And then the DC logo down there. Uh, there's a piece right there. Uh, by Jock with Batman and one of his Robins and then the Red Hood origin and the ISBN. Now, if you don't know who the Red Hood is and don't want to know, by all means, do not read the back of this because it tells you exactly who it is within the first sentence, uh, the back of the book here. And also, you know, you may want to skip this video or jump around to where I talk about the build of the book because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but I feel like He's been around for a while, and I think most people know there was even a movie with the character. As a matter of fact, that's why they changed the title. It used to be just Batman Under the Hood. Now it's Batman Under the Red Hood, which is what the movie is called, the animated movie at that. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do, because so many of my viewers asked me where to put this, I wanted to show the books together that people are like, I think I'm going to keep mine right next to A Death in the Family. Now, if you have them out like this, holy crap, you got a lot of room, but that's awesome. The spines, however, don't really match. You have the old DC logo down there when they were transitioning to the new logo. You have the Batman Mignola piece up here where there's no red hood up here. Uh, so it's not like the same designer worked on both. I, at least I don't think they did. And then, of course, the backs of the books don't look anything the same. Uh, but that's to kind of give you a heads up. As far as me, where I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it right after City of Crime, which is where I used to keep Under the Red Hood Complete Collection. Even though this collects The Lost Days, it doesn't matter. I still think it makes perfect sense to put it here if you're doing a Batman read-through. So this has been available before in a trade paperback. Two trade paperbacks, Under the Red Hood and The Lost Days. Now, this is Under the Red Hood, the complete collection. Or just the thicky. I'm not sure what DC calls them. Uh, but now, let's take a look. Underneath the dust jacket, you have this image right here. And Judd Winnick, Doug Mankey, Tom Wynn, Alex Sinclair, and Pat Brizzo over here on the flaps. And then... This image of the Red Hood and Batman duking it out by Doug Mankey. Alright, we're going to open this book up. I do have to talk about, like I said, the identity of the Red Hood and a little bit of what happened before here. Uh, so just in case, some spoilers going in. Uh, if you want to skip to the build of the book and the extras, by all means, I leave the timestamps in the description of the video for that reason. But everyone else, let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. Now, let's see what's in here and what is new. You have the black end pages here. You have this image of the Red Hood, Batman under the Red Hood, the Deluxe Addiction. Addiction. Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day. Addition. Judd Winnick, Jeff Loeb, Jim Starlin are the writers. That's interesting. Why credit those people? I think most of you know you're here because I said I would talk about the things that happened in the past. Uh, Doug Mankey, Jeremy Hahn, Jane, uh, Shane Davis, Eric Battle. Pablo Raimondi, Jim Lee, Paul Lee are your main pencilers. Then you have Tom Wynn, and you have Jeremy Hahn, Rodney Ramos doing some of the inks, Alex Sinclair, and Brian Reber doing the coloring, Pat Brazo doing the main lettering, and then, of course, Jock doing the collection artist. Batman created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane, Superman by Jerry Seigel and Joe Schuster. Here's your table of contents where you're going to find each of these particular stories and a little bit of behind the scenes. So what is new in here? 
You have this awesome introduction by Judd Winnick, and man, after rereading this, we just did an old reader, new reader on this a few months back, Amanda and Maddie and I, and it just made me miss Judd Winnick writing these stories. Whether it's Batman, whether it was his Outsiders or his Green Arrow or Green Lantern, I really wish the guy would come back to comics. Uh, or DC Comics, or hell, Marvel, because I loved his Exiles. I'd love to see him tackle X-Men. Uh, but he talks a, a little bit about the background. Now, if you've never read Under the Red Hood, you don't know who's he under this hood, maybe don't read the introduction. There's the Mad Wagner cover. And we kick it off in Gotham City with a huge fight, the fight that you saw on the art on board with Batman against the Red Hood. So this collects Batman 636 to 641, 645 to 650, annual 25, and then you have Red Hood, The Lost Days. It's a miniseries, 1 through 6, and then material from Batman 617 to 618. That, so that is what's collected in here, because I don't think the solicits even said what was collected in this book. Most of us assume it was Lost Days, but now it's confirmed it's in here. And I'll talk a little bit about Lost Days without going too much into spoilers as to what exactly was being written in that particular time. So, what's going on? Who is this masked guy that you've never really seen? Although you have seen this particular Red Hood right here in the past. And of course, that's a character from the Silver Age. That was a character that was sort of in the killing joke, maybe. Um, but... This is another Red Hood. He's stabbing Batman. He's knocking the crap out of him until Batman just drops him off the side of the building. And he tries to stop himself or slow himself down with a knife on the... That is a powerful knife right there. I'm surprised the blade didn't break. But this is where he's just showing you how badass this guy is. So he unmasks Batman and you're like, holy crap, what the heck? And he's like, look at you. I guess we should keep it even. And he takes his mask off. So how did all this happen? Don't worry, we're going to have some flashbacks because when you see Bruce's reaction, who's underneath the mask, he's like, oh God. Now, of course, immediately some of us as we were reading this monthly kind of guessed who it was. We were like, okay, no way. Uh, but there's a little bit of a flashback. And the flashback is just introducing us to the notion that there's a new vigilante, it seems like, but a new villain that has asked all of Gotham's underground, all the criminal heads, the, the leaders of these families, to come together because he has a proposition. And his proposition is pretty much, uh, yeah, you're all going to die. I'm going to kill each and every one of you. He's got a duffel bag full of heads of all of the people that he's killed the head of all of the lieutenants is what he's got in that duffel bag so he got this meeting because he was pretending to be black mask now the thing to understand is this is during the time of batman when there was war games going on it's in the aftermath of no man's land and during war games when black mask was pretty much the criminal head in gotham city uh you know, he had knocked out everybody, and, and in the pages of Catwoman, it kind of further developed what he had done in Gotham. So he gets the note that, hey, all these people got killed, and you're the one that told us to come to this meeting. And he's like, I didn't call the meeting. That's it. It's time to get a bodyguard. So he hires um, Mr. Freeze. Interesting that he went with Mr. Freeze, but then again, it's Black Mask. So Batman's trying to figure out who killed all of these people, who killed all these criminals. Uh, Nightwing shows up for a while while he's investigating, and <laughs> Batman kind of blows him off a little bit. Mr. Freeze gets his new costume, which looks a lot like the animated costume, and eventually what happens is that the Red Hood calls in for a meeting. Let's just fight with Amazo here, where Batman and Nightwing take him out. But the Red Hood calls a meeting with Black Mask, telling him, look, I've got kryptonite for sale. You're going to want this. And Black Mask is like, yeah, I want it. So he sends, of course, Mr. Freeze. Uh, this is a really interesting cover because it has a second printing of this. This is when he is unmasked. And this is the second printing, again, by Matt Wagner. So Mr. Freeze goes in there and he's like, hey, here's your money, Red Hood. Where's the kryptonite? And Red Hood's like, I'm not going to give you the kryptonite. He had already put a bunch of guns everywhere, taken out everybody. And then Batman gets involved. And then we see... The Red Hood meet Nightwing and try to take him out. But then we see that the Red Hood has kidnapped the Joker and with a crowbar starts beating him. By now, 
most of us knew who this was. Now, Batman's a little confused because he's like, who is this guy? Who is this Red Hood that's going around and knocking villains out? He has an idea that it could be Jason Todd, the second Robin. That's why that story, that's why people want to keep this right next to a death in the family. It's the Robin that got killed by Joker. It's the Robin that got killed because us heartless bastards voted for him to get killed and paid our 75 cents to call the 900 number because we weren't fans of that Robin. We wanted the classic Dick Grayson back, but instead we got something even better, Tim Drake. And hey, look where we are. Uh, so what Batman is doing is he's going around the world and asking people like, hey, uh, we need to talk about some supernatural things going on and, you know, and, uh, about people coming back from the dead. So like I said, he's got an idea who is behind this Red Hood. This is when Onyx was a big player during this time again, the time of war games and war drums. And honestly, this is kind of in the middle of that storyline. But let's fast forward here a little bit. Doug Mankey, of course, applying most of the artwork. But let's get back to this fight that we saw at the very beginning. This went on for quite a while. Now, we've gotten some clues as to who is behind the Red Hood, but this is the actual revelation. This is after Batman and him were fighting, and he unmasked Batman, and then he unmasked himself, and he's like... You want to guess again? Because he thinks. And it is Jason Todd. Who's wearing a mask underneath a mask. Takes a manly man to do that. And, you know, Bruce is like, you can't be. There's no way. So Jason Todd's like, no, here's some blood and tissue. Go test it. And you know deep down it's me. And, you know, he triggers a bomb and leaves. Now, this is one of my favorite moments. When Batman is at the Batcave with Alfred. And Alfred's like... You don't think it's actually him, do you? And Batman's looking at the memoriam, this glass where he keeps Robin's costume, Jason Todd's costume after he died. And Alfred says, sir, would you like me to remove that from the cave? And Batman's like, no, leave it. This doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything at all. I love that. That was one of my favorite Batman moments on Judd Winnick's run. Uh, so then we get a little bit of a flashback between Batman and Robin, Jason Todd, what happened to him. And it is very important to read A Death in the Family. Um, this is a story that's drawn by Shane Davis. And Jock's applying some of the artwork now, some of the covers here. Now, this does end up in a big, huge fight between Batman and Black Mask and Red Hood. And the Joker gets involved. But the biggest thing that happened, though, <laughs> is that this, there's this big cliffhanger ending. And then you go on to Infinite Crisis, and then you get one year later. So you never really get exactly what happened at the end. I mean, you you can assume what happened because one year later showcases where Bruce Wayne is, where Dick Grayson is, where Jason Todd is after the whole Infinite Crisis. Now, there was one really amazing annual. This is annual 25 right here. That shows a little bit of behind the scenes as to how the Red Hood came to power. And, of course, going into detail the day that he died. The most beautiful thing about this, and this is why you have a credit for Jim Apero here, um, the very beginning where you see the pencilers. Uh, Jim Apero is one of the pencilers here. And the reason they had that is because Jim Apero drew two spread or two splash pages in case people voted for Robin to live and in case people voted for Robin to die. He was ready, DC was ready. This was the alternate page right here where Batman's saying he's alive, thank God. And this came out after Apparel passed away, so it meant something really special to us. Because to me, Jim Apparel was my Batman artist. I loved his art. I mean, he was the Batman artist that was there from the first time I read Batman uh, as a kid. You know, he made it all the way through night, uh, Nightfall. He was just a wonderful artist. And it was so cool to see his art again, of course, with new colors. Uh, but this annual explains exactly how Damien, or Jason Todd became the Red Hood. And we get a little bit of the Hush story here where you see Jason Todd appear and threatening the new Robin, Tim Drake. But that fight turned out to be the Clayface character. But that is a little bit of a retcon because as you find out through a series of flashbacks here... It wasn't Clayface. It was the whole time supposed to be Jason Todd. Now, Lost Days is collected here, which is good because th that 
particular trade paperback, I want to say, was out of print for a long time. Um, so I'm glad that it's back here now. It's collected in this. Because, yeah, when these trade paperbacks go out of print, they get ridiculous. What this does is this fills in that missing gap from the resurrection because of Infinite Crisis and, of course, the Lazarus Pit to the day that he went to Gotham to take on the Underworld. And you see here a little bit of background, how he's raised by the League of Assassins, how Talia al Ghul rescued him and put him in the Lazarus Pit, how he was a walking zombie at first, how Rej al Ghul did not agree with any of this. Uh, and you see him being trained, and the whole thing is all about revenge and wanting revenge and studying his enemies. It gets into a little bit of a creepy level here. I'm not going to spoil why, but if you've read it, you probably know what I'm talking about, that I didn't see that coming. And you start seeing him wear a red hood and go out there and get closer and closer to Gotham. By the time you get to the final issue, which I'm not going to go over here, uh, you do get to see him pretty much put on that classic red hood. And mask and then take on Gotham so that is what's all collected in this particular book uh, now those lost days issues these are mainly drawn by Jeremy Hahn and Pablo Ramondi and then the covers are done by I believe this built yeah Bill Tucci does the covers now let's welcome everybody back that did not want any spoilers all right, welcome everybody back that did not want any kind of spoilers. Here we have the back matter. So we have the character designs by Judd Winnick, the Lost Day sketch gallery by Billy Tucci, the Judd Winnick script to pencils here by Doug Mankey. I love when they add things like this. I wish they had been splash pages instead of thumbnail sketches and original art. And then the making of the 2010, gosh, did it come out in 2010? Red Hood animated film. Now, the book has 544 pages. It retails for $49.99. It does have glued binding. And the paper stock is printed in this semi-glossy paper. So that's the kind of pages that they're using here. But if you want to see the way that it lays over towards the beginning... You do get a little bit of gutter loss, of course, because it's glued binding. But, yeah, even holding it down, you don't get the whole picture. And so you do get minimal gutter loss in this. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this deluxe edition, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you're going to put it right next to your A Death in the Family Deluxe Edition, or if you're going to keep it in chronological order. Love to know all those answers down below. If you have any questions yourself, go ahead and leave those questions down below. Smash that like button on the way out, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I figure you've subscribed if you made it this far, maybe. And check out our Patreon and Spreadshop, amazing ways to support the channel. We do have different tiers on our Patreon, starting at a dollar a month. And it's a phenomenal way to support the channel. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.